You're still watching Ways Now. For over 400 years, more than 15 million men, women, and children were the victims of the tragic um, transatlantic slave trade, one of the darkest chapters in human history. Every year on the 25th of March, the International Day of Remembrance of the Victim of Slavery and Transatlantic Slave Trade offers the opportunity to honor and remember those who suffered and died at the hands of the brutal slavery system. The International Day also aims to raise awareness about the dangers of racism and prejudice. Um, Jennifer, do you have any, any slave trade history or story? Uh, not really, not really. Mm. But I, um, to be honest, not to sound like I don't care or to sound insensitive, in 2019, I, um, that's December, I traveled to Benin Republic, Togo, and Ghana all in December. It was like a trip for my friends and I. Yeah. And for every of those countries that we went to, they showed us the museums and they showed us, um, the places where the slaves were buried, the mm -hmm. point of no return, point of no return and yeah. all of that. Yeah, I think by the time I got to Ghana, I was already tired of hearing the sad um, history. Mm. So um, when we got to, there was a deep, um, a very dark tunnel where they made the, um, where they had to keep the slaves before they took them through the point of no return and onto the boats where some of them actually eventually died. Mm. I, I just told the person who was talking, like, you know what, I'm just going to stay outside. When you people are done with the wow. water, please meet me outside. It was too much. It was actually too much to take in. Like, every country had their own history. Every mm. one of them had something to say. And it was basically the same thing, just different venues, different locations, and different times. But it was really sad. It was really sad, to be yeah. honest. Honestly, if you go through the slavery story, eh, it's, some, it's actually draining. You just feel so yeah. weak, you know. Now, trying to picture... What would you have done if you didn't have the liberty that you have today? It's actually very, very draining. And I think, yeah, um, it is. And I think every young person should actually go and you know, learn about the history of all of those um, slave trade and all of that. It will help you when dealing with you know, certain national issues. You understand? You will treat it with caution. It's just like when people are talking about... Uh, what's it called? Let Nigeria divide. Let this one happen. Let this one happen. You know, some of us have been through like crises, riots, and you know, ethnic clashes, religious wars, and all of that. You would understand that mm -mm, there are some things you have to take a pause and really, really think through. Is this what we want? All right. So I don't know if we have Mori there now. If Mori is not there, I'll probably just take my story. Um, so what I found in the news today was quite heartbreaking. Because I organize um, a tournament annually. I've not been able to do that for the last, um, since 20, uh, 20, I didn't do 2020. I'm, I'm, we're not doing this year. Hopefully we'll start, we'll resume next year where we organize board games, um, tournaments for children. We gather about 3,000 children into a hall and they play chess, Scrabble and our uh, local I.O. Lokmo. So this SS3 student um, uh, in a school in Makodi, he was, um, I think he was in class, and um, I think um, he didn't have exams. Some, people, some other people had exams to write, and the young boy was asked to, you know, just sit in class. So he said, instead of st sitting still, he picked up his um, chess board from the, he picked up his chess uh, board from his bag and displayed it and started playing chess with, with a few of his friends, only for the teacher to pick up the young man, um, <laughs> pick up the young man and took him to the principal's office. Now, the shocking thing that the principal did, the police, this principal is a, is a priest, you know. That one, in turn, now picked up about six kobokos, eh? shared it to two other teachers, and they started flogging this boy mercilessly. All for what? Playing chess game. Do these teachers even understand what chess does to the mind? how chess is so good when it comes to analytical skills and, you know, do, do they understand the benefits of chess to the mind of a child? The boy did not pick up, uh, what's it called, music to be playing. He didn't do not all of those things. He picked up chess to play, an SS3 student. Like, I, am, I don't understand the kind of um, things that go on in our schools these days. Honestly, when I saw it, I said, God, look at, the num look at his back. 
<sighs> um, let, let me say something about this story. Um, this is actually really heartbreaking. And I think enough is enough. We've seen a lot of stories about teachers um, being mean to students for no reason. And even if there is a reason, there should be an extent to which you can go in punishing a child. Mm -hmm. And this this is just very unnecessary. And call me a priest at that. I, it, it, it is very, very bad. And I think that we need to start holding teachers accountable and responsible for the things that happen to our kids while they are in school. Yeah. If your child should come home looking tattered, looking, um, um, looking injured or damaged, then there should be somebody in the school that should be held responsible for that. Because while the parents are going out to work, to provide and pay school fees for these kids the teachers are supposed to look after them train them but instead you're you're treating them bad and making them feel less about themselves mm. this is, uh, no 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 this is really bad it's, it's so really bad, bad honestly and i think parents should take up this situation because this just brings to my mind when i was in gss was it maybe gss 2 or gss 3 i cannot recall now my my our house where we were living was way it's like two opposite ends it's just like living in in ekpe and going to school in um, in magodo on the mainland so it was two opposite ends in kaduna so we usually even after waking up at 4 a.m and all of that sometimes we still run a bit late maybe 10 minutes past eight in school so this particular time a principal came into so we, we went late to school and the principal now took um what's it called um uh, you know those our own cane is not the koboko the one you pluck from a tree and it had the spikes on it Right? So the principal, I was telling the principal that, see, we have a bit of concession when it comes to coming late because every school knows that we, we live far away from the school. Guess what? The man still flogged me. And he bust my, my, my palm. It was bleeding. By the time I got home, <laughs> my father saw it. <laughs> my father marched back to the school, picked up the koboko. He was going to beat the principal. Next time, <laughs> you don't touch my daughter. I'm saying that parents to also fight for your children because like this boy now, if I were the parent, I would make sure that I sued the school. Because, I mean, he didn't do anything wrong, right? It's not like he was making noise. Chess is not the game that maybe distra the, um, distracts the class or something. You know, so I think the parent also should also take, um, take action. They shouldn't wait for the government. All right, so um, do we have Maury now? Yes, we have Maury. Ha, huh, finally, oh, madam. All right, Sorry. so <laughs> what did you find for us in the news? It was um okay so there's this lady uh, her name actually apparently was not in the news but um so she was driving and then she said that a dead body was in front of her all of a sudden people were you know so sur people surrounded her and they were screaming and they were shouting you know i think the fear made her get down from her car you know to see what was going on and because of, of the good person that she is she decided to carry the person to the hospital with the hope the person might still be alive and on her on her getting to the hospital the doctors confirmed the person dead wow right and then they let her go with dead body and um her friend advised her not to go to police station that instead they should dump the dead body in you know under the canal or on the roadside oh. and then she got caught in the process and people are saying that why didn't she go to the police you know if she didn't have anything to say and you know it was just all over the place and she was crying and she was saying she didn't go because she was scared that the police would um you know reprimand her or make her take the 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 blame for something that she didn't know about you know yeah so that's just basically it was it was, it was a rather sad case i mean we're not supposed to judge from what you see but from what i saw it did look like she was actually very innocent um so yeah but that's what i found on the news today hmm she's well though <laughs> yeah. so how was your day quickly this uh, day, you're, looking, okay, you're looking all glammed up where did you go to that we are looking for you since morning well, one of my friends got married. I, I, because of because of the show, I, I honestly left the wedding. Like, so I just spent like two hours there, but I spent five hours on the road. I'm not even lying. Oh wow! Oh, you know, wow. I spent ten hours outside today. Five hours out of that ten was on the road. Wow! Actually, six to calculate going. I spent my whole day on the road, but it's okay. I'm here. Sorry. Wow. But you I look lovely, here. though. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so. Thank you. When we come back from the break, Maury and Jennifer, this is your story, your two of you. Your, you people have been itching to talk about this. So I can't wait to hear your opinion on uh, Mr. Derek, the relationship coach. Stay mm -hmm. with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> 